Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Starting us tonight is a man of grace, anointed man of God, a prophet to the nations. He was with us at YAC. We have now recovered. He speaks over nations. He speaks over nations. Tonight, with Jesus' joy in your heart, for the first time in Weimar, Prophet Toby Arayomi. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you give Jesus one more shout of praise? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Whoa. Baba Baba Kena Baba Atakandosha. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, lift your hands. Father, we lift our hands all over this room at the Young Minister's Retreat. Father, we've come here to regroup for a new year, for a new seven years for a new 20 years. Anoint us for the next seven years. Anoint us, not just for 2023, but Lord, anoint us even for 2030 and beyond. Father, I ask you for a grace to be released tonight that is gonna to touch your people effectively and transform them forever. As the scriptures declares, you will come into the company of the prophets and you'll be turned into a different person. I declare tonight, by reason of them coming into this company, the young minister's retreat is going out, prophets, tonight. In the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. You may be gloriously seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is so good to be with you tonight. I have a word from the Lord that if you'll calmly, gently take your seats, we'll share that word tonight. I believe that God has given me a message that will anoint you for the next seven years. And I want to speak to that anointing tonight. So if you can find your seats very quickly, I don't like much movement with the preaching of the word. If you can find a seat very, very quickly, I would appreciate that so that your neighbor does not get distracted. I want to honor the Lord for Pastor Daniel and Pastor Nifa. I appreciate them so much for this amazing work that they are doing in Nigeria. May God continue to enlarge it in Jesus' name. And to my precious wife who is in the building, Prophetess Tema Arayami. God bless you, Mama. Amen. And to my amazing staff and team that are here tonight as well. God bless you too. I want to minister tonight very quickly about the witness. I believe in the witness. I believe now more than ever, we need a witness if we take our Bibles 
to the book of Revelation chapter 19. I'm not sure if we can get it up on the board. Um, Revelation chapter 19. My internet is out, so I'm going to have to rely on you. Revelation 19 and verse 10. I'm going to read it for the sake of time. There we go. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, Seest thou do it not? For I am your fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have this testimony. The, the word testimony, by the way, is the same as the word witness. So of your brothers who have this same witness, worship God for the witness or the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I want to preach a message tonight that may upset your Pentecost, but it's going to ignite your propheticost. It's going to ignite the prophetic oil that is on the inside of you. By reason of Acts chapter 1, where the Bible says you will be witnesses unto me in Nigeria, in Lagos, in Kaduna, in Kano, and to the ends of the earth. By reason of the Holy Ghost, who is the witness, the dispensation that we find ourselves in today means that God cannot rely anymore on the witness of one person. Because in order to have a witness of Jesus, you must be prophetic. Tap your neighbor and say, you've got to be prophetic. Okay, find another neighbor and say, you've got to be prophetic. The witness does not work if you're not prophetic. So in the Old Testament, God selected a few people and gave them a witness. Isaiah testified of Jesus although he could not really say his name he said his name shall be wonderful counselor prince of peace everlasting father he could not pick the right name for him prophets of old spoke of this one that would come saying unto us a child is born unto us a son is given but they could not see the face of him who was to come Moses longed to see it and even he was not able and God said I'll show you my back but my face no one can see and live but we begin to see in the book of Acts chapter 2 a better covenant a better witness and this witness says it will come to pass in that day that I will pour out my spirit on come on help me preach this today on on some flesh on just your pastors maybe on the worship team no no he said I'm gonna pour out my spirit on all flesh and get, get this the manifestation of the outpouring will be that your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Why? Because without the prophetic, a generation cannot be a witness. I need the spirit of prophecy to bear witness of the reality of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and just say to them real quick, you can see Jesus and not see Jesus. Look at your other neighbor and say, you can see Jesus and not see Jesus. My challenge to you tonight is this. If Jesus was to walk into this auditorium, how many of you would know he was here? Because the truth is, people who walked with him for three years and saw him on the road to Emmaus saw him but didn't see him. 
I wish I had somebody to help me preach this for a second. The, the, the truth is, a woman who walked with him for three years at his tomb could not recognize him. The truth is, when Jesus had risen again and Peter went back fishing, he showed up on the shore. But even Peter, who was called the rock, could not see Jesus. Because without the spirit of prophecy, you cannot see Jesus. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? Let's take our Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 17. And whilst we're going there, just holler, can I get a witness? Come on, just shout it out. Can I get a witness? God needs a witness. Let's take our Bibles to Luke 17 verse 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. Tap your neighbor and tell him, Go show yourself to the priest. So the Bible says, And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Oh, you didn't understand that. Because according to the book of Deuteronomy, you do not go to the priest to be healed. You go to the priest when you've been healed. You must be healed before you go to the priest. Leviticus says the priest will examine the leprosy and if the leprosy is no longer there, you no longer need to stand afar off. You can now come into the community. But the Bible says something different happened. It says, as they went to the priest, they were being healed every single step they were taken. I came to declare to you tonight that as you are approaching the priest, you are being healed. I came to, I, I wish somebody could shout a better amen. As you are approaching the priest tonight, you are being healed. But watch this, verse 15. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Can I get two men to just come up real quick, two of you? I just want to show you what happened. Is that okay? Here you have Jesus. Stand over here, Jesus. And here you have the Old Testament. Because the word testament comes from the word to testate or witness. So here you have the old witness. And over here you have the new witness. And the new witness is telling ten lepers. Can I get ten lepers up here real quick? Just ten of you. Come up real quick. Come on up real quick. Real quick. I just need ten of you. I just need 10 of you. So here is the instruction tonight. Oh, you're going to get blessed. I promise you. Stand in front of the new witness. And the new witness told them, told them what? One. Go and, Go and wash yourself. Go and, no, no, that's not what he told them, brother. What did he tell them? He said, go and, Go and show yourself to the priest. Go and show yourself to the priest. So go. And the Bible says, as they went, stop at the priest, please. As they went, they were healed. But one of them turned around and he came back. <laughs> 
and glorified God. And he said, come on, next verse. Verse 16. And he fell down, fall down, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. In other words, he wasn't part of the church. He, he wasn't a believer. This is important for a reason. Because 10 of them that had all been in church, all good Jewish boys, went to show themselves to the Levitical priest. Why? Because he told them, go and show yourself to the priest. But look what happened. And Jesus answered and said, hang on, we're not 10 of you cleansed. Where are the other nine? But I looked at the instruction, Pastor Daniel, and he said, go and show yourself to the priest. So why would Jesus ask them to go show themselves to the priest and then be perplexed that none came back to glorify God except this strength? Watch it. I said to God, I don't understand. Why would you tell them, go show yourself to the priest? Because the priest had to bear witness that they had been healed. But as they went, they were healed. So one of them turned back, realizing that he had been healed and glorified God. And why are you perplexed when you said, go show yourself to the priest? And then I heard the voice of God from heaven shout down, I am the priest. Oh, come on, you didn't get this. <laughs> Because a stranger understood what the church didn't understand. Because it's possible to get so familiar that you can see Jesus and not see Jesus. He can be standing right in front of you, ready to heal you. But because you don't have the witness, I came to tell you tonight, Nigeria is not going to be changed by Christians. Nigeria is going to be changed by witnesses. The Bible says you will be witnesses in Lagos, in Kaduna, in Sokoto, in Jos, in Kano, and to the ends of the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Look at your neighbor and say, can I get a witness? Come on, find one neighbor and say, can I get a witness? Are you a witness? Have you seen him? Jesus walks up to 12 men who had walked with him at least a year and a half. And he said, who am I? Jesus was not suffering the onset of amnesia when he said, who am I? You see, when Jesus asks you a question, he already knows the answer to the question. But Jesus was not looking for a Christian. He was looking for a witness. So he said, hey, 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 who am I? And they looked at him and they said, well, some say you're Elijah. I studied law. When you have a witness come into a court, the job of the witness is to say what they saw. Good God, help me preach this tonight. They cannot say what they saw somebody saw. Because their testimony will be inadmissible. It will be called hearsay or at least speculation. Because speculation says somebody else said. And the reason many of us cannot overcome the devil is because I'm afraid in the church we have too many hearsay Christians. 
We have too many speculative Christians who regurgitate what they heard their pastor say. We have too many believers in the body whose belief is based on what somebody said or what their mommy said or what their daddy said and their daddy's daddy said. And so somebody said, some say you're Elijah, Jesus said, that's hearsay. Some say you're John the Baptist, Jesus said, speculation. Hey Simon, what about you? You're Christ, the living son of God. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You are a witness. And on this rock, on this witness, I can build something. Because you can't build upon a speculator. You can, I'm, I'm gonna preach myself happy. If you don't shout, the rocks will cry out. You can't preach upon a speculator. And the reason the gates of hell are prevailing against the church is because the church must become a witness. This Bible we preach, this Bible we share, three quarters of it was written by a man who never saw the physical Jesus once. Don't worry, I'm going to leave in a minute, but you best get excited. The thing you shout about on Sunday, young people, was written by a man who never met the physical Jesus once. And yet this man was able to say, I am the greatest of all God's apostles. How can a man who never met the physical Jesus once say, I am the greatest of all God's apostles? Because by reason of the Holy Spirit, Paul was there at the cross. By reason of the Holy Spirit, Paul saw Jesus risen from the dead. By reason of the Holy Ghost, Paul was able to say, I know a man, whether out of the body or inside the body, I do not know, but he was caught up. My brother, my sister, when the Holy Ghost is in you, you're already at the cross. When the Holy Ghost is in you, you're already at the throne room. When the Holy Ghost is in you, you've already seen your Savior crucified and risen again. How is it that 2,023 years later, this gospel is still being preached? The Holy Ghost, who is the witness. And every brother who has this same witness can worship. If you don't have the witness, you can imitate worship. But you can't worship. I was at a friend's house. I share this story often. It's one of my most favorite stories. True story. My friend and I were praying with my brother and a couple of other leaders in our church. She had just got born again. She was a Muslim and she wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Her name was Fahana. And here we are praying in tongues and saying it's time for you to pray and she was praying and upstairs in the upstairs of her house I heard I opened my eyes and I looked around because I was looking for a demon and there was nothing there then I said Kila Baha upstairs I heard Baha I looked around the room I looked up elsewhere Nothing. Fahana was still praying. My brother and I looked at each other because we both heard the same sound. Sakantora Baha upstairs. Sakantora Baha. I said, Fahana. She opened her eyes. She said, What? 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 I said, What is that? She said, What? I said, That noise. And she said, Oh, that's my dad's African gray parrots. I said to her, you mean to tell me 
that parents can speak in tongues to? Oh, I wish I had a church in here tonight. Because the problem is half of us are parroting our neighbor's tongues. Half of us are parroting our neighbor's prayer life. Half of us are parroting our neighbor's worship life. The question is, do you have the witness? Come on, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to prove you got the witness. Anybody got the witness right now? You better let out a shout. If the witness is in you. Watch this. Sit down for a minute. When the Holy Ghost fills you, it's as if you were there. I need a woman. Can I get a woman for this final illustration? Book of John, chapter 5. Jesus goes to Samaria again. Can I tell you, why does Jesus keep going to Samaria? Because sometimes the world gets what belongs to the church. Because the church is too familiar with a God they barely even know. And so God has to let the world catch a hold of what the church doesn't want. Jesus meets this Greek woman and this Greek woman starts to beg him saying, please, my daughter's demon possessed and he ignores her because he was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then this woman starts to worship because worship is, is not skin deep. Worship is spirit deep. When you worship, you prove you have the witness. So as long as she was begging, Jesus was ignoring. But the moment she worshipped, Jesus said, does she have the witness? So he turned around and he said, I was not sent. It is not right for me to give the children's food to the dog. Because the word Gentile meant dog. I can't take what belongs to my children and feed it to the Gentiles but this woman said something yes but even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall off the table that the children don't want that the children don't want what if God is in this room today ready to heal you but you don't want it what if he's in this room today ready to bless you but you don't want it and what if there is a world out there getting blessed from crumbs but you have the whole loaf But you become so familiar with the loaf that you don't realize that you can be healed just from the crumbs. Come on. It doesn't take much to heal you. It doesn't take all that prayer. It doesn't take all those tongues. It doesn't take all of that. It just takes crumbs to be healed. So Jesus meets this woman at a well and they're sitting at the well and Jesus comes to her and without introduction he says to her woman get me a drink and this woman looked at him and said who do you think you are an Igbo man asking me a Yoruba man for a drink
Nigeria will be saved when we stop worshiping a tribal Jesus. Nigeria will be saved when we stop worshiping a Jesus that wants to touch your tribe and not my tribe. That wants to heal your denomination and not my denomination. Can I offend you for a second? Jesus meets this woman and says to her, if only you knew the gift of God. Why? Because you can see Jesus and not see Jesus. He said, woman, get me a drink. And the woman said, what kind of drink do you want? You see, the world is going crazy right now. What kind of drink does Jesus want? Does he want a black drink or a white drink? Does he want a Yoruba drink or a Hausa drink? Does he want an Igbo drink? What kind of drink do you want? Do you want, do you want a Methodist drink or a charismatic drink? Do you want a charismatic renewal drink or do you want a Pentecostal drink? And all Jesus wants is some water. And he says, if you knew the gift of God and who was speaking to you, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living waters. Verse 11. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you think you can get this living water? Now, I hope you understand they're speaking metaphorically. I hope you understand. If you don't mind, I'm a little bit shy to share this story. But this was not a conversation that was spiritual. This was deeper than a spiritual conversation. Because in those days, everybody understood that waters were symbolic of um, biology. Okay, you'll get that when you get home. Everybody understood. That's why the scripture says, do not cast your, 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 your seed upon many waters. Because waters were symbolic of the male seed. So this woman, and everybody knew in Jewish culture, you go to a well to find your wife. Oh, you're going to get this in a minute. Everybody understood it. That's why Jacob met his wife at a well. That's why most of the patriarchs went to the well. The well was the tinder. Are you okay? Is this okay? So they would go to the well. So that's why the disciples came back and marveled that he was speaking to a woman because everybody understood what woman do at a well. They bend down to pick up the... I'm going to behave myself in a minute. But just let me preach this. They would go to the well. To... And as they were... They would hope a man would come and say, just like Jacob, let me help you, ma'am. So here comes Jesus to this woman and she's used to going to the well to pick up. And Jesus says, woman, get me a drink. He said, how dare you? And he said, if you knew the gift of God, he said, whoa. She said, baby, this well is deep. <laughs> Where do you think you're going to get this so-called living water? Next verse. Oh, you didn't know this about your Bible. You're about to find something. The woman saith unto him, Sir, that has nothing to do with well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Verse 12. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank thereof and fed his children and cattle? Verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give shall never thirst again for the water that I shall give will be a well spring up to everlasting life. Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Give me this water that I too may drink. And now Jesus breaks the bubble of flirtation. And he asks her a question. Go and call your husband. And she begins to I, 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 I don't have a husband. The only one I'm here for is you, boo. 
Oh, come on, help me preach this. I, I, I'm just here for you. He said, no, no. He said, you've been married five times. And the person you're living with right now is not your husband. She says, oh, you're a prophet then. What's this? Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. But you people say that in Jerusalem is the place men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me. The hour cometh when you shall neither worship in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. A time is coming where worship won't need a mountain. Worship won't need a podcast. Worship won't need an MP3 player. A time is coming where a generation of worshipers will be so infused with the spirit of prophecy that everywhere they are, even when the washing machine is going, it's saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they're having a praise break whilst they're doing the laundry. The hour cometh when you'll neither worship on this mountain because God is a spirit and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know the Messiah cometh because you can see Jesus The hour cometh, he said, I know the Messiah cometh, which is called the Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Verse 26, Jesus saith unto her, I, he speak to you, I'm he. Now go back a couple of verses. I want you to go to the hour cometh and now is. Go back to the hour cometh and now is quickly because of time go back to I don't but the hour look at this verse 23 but the hour cometh where is it you just passed it it was there can we get it back up I know the Messiah verse 26 23 but the hour cometh and now is Do you get God's spiritual mathematics? Watch this. Woman, the hour is coming. But it's also now. Oh, you didn't hear that. Whoa, whoa. What are you talking about? The hour is coming. But it's also here. How can something be coming and be here at the same time? Either it's coming or it's here. But it can't be coming and not be here. I want you to understand this. The woman said to Jesus, I perceive you are a prophet. You see, prophets are people who tell you the hour is coming. But Jesus was not just a prophet. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law and so Jesus the prophet said, woman, the hour cometh. But because I'm not just a prophet, I'm the son of God and now it could God help me preach this today? He was saying as a prophet, thus saith the Lord. But I am the Lord. Oh, come on, help me preach this. He was saying, it's coming and it's here. 
the covenant of old was only able to declare what's coming but we the New Testament prophet can't just don't just have the power and privilege to say thus saith the Lord we also, we also can say in Jesus name So if you're not a true worshiper, rise to your feet for a second. If you're not a true worshiper, it's what's going to happen. You're going to say, revival is coming to Nigeria. But if you're a worshiper, you don't realize that your worship can activate something that's coming and make it manifest right now. And all God needs is one witness. Who can say the hour is coming? And now is. The new Nigeria is coming. And now is. Somebody said to me, they said the new Nigeria is coming, but we need structure. The new Nigeria is coming, but we need a system. When Jesus came, he didn't need structure. When Jesus came, he didn't need a system. When Jesus came, he just needed a stable, some hay, and some witnesses. Even if those witnesses were wise kings and shepherds, all God needs tonight is one person who can lift up their voice and say, the hour cometh. But because I am a true worshiper, I can take what's coming and pull it into the now. Is there a witness in this house? Is there a witness in this house? No, I'm not talking about acute worship. I'm talking about the kind of worshiper that can pull something that's meant for Nigeria in 10 years and make it manifest in this room here tonight. Is there a real witness in this house? The Lord told me, he said, when you get to Young Minister's Retreat, I want you to release the double portion. I need somebody hungry for it. The Lord told me when you get here tonight, I want you to release the double portion. I got about eight minutes left. If you're hungry for the double portion, and only if you're hungry, get out of your chair quickly. 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 I want to release upon you tonight upon a generation of Elishas I've come as a prophet of God tonight don't crush anybody stop right there stop right there I want to release God upon you stop right there honey don't worry don't push there's a fire that touched my life at 16 years old that shot me to the nations. I've been to over 30 nations prophesied all over the world because I'm walking in a mantle that is not for me. It's bigger than me. I know that. And I'm ready to release this mantle to a generation of people who are gonna dream dreams, who are gonna, I feel the anointing in this house, who are gonna see visions, I feel God's hand here. Somebody's getting ready to go home with a different power. But I want you to know what you're receiving. The double portion comes from the word pay 
it means mouth or to speak you see the Bible says by the mouth of two a thing is established but when you're walking in the double portion you're walking in a double mouth and this is why Elisha was able to say there will be no rain except at my word because not only was one side able to decree another side of him was able to establish because he had the double portion somebody say double portion everybody lift your hands right now and pray in the Holy Ghost Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this generation, I ask you, let your eyes be attentive unto them right now. Hungry witnesses, hungry to carry this prophetic torch, thirsty to carry this prophetic mantle I release that which you place upon my life I release the mantle the double portion upon this generation let fire come down now from the crown of the heads to the sole of their feet baptize this generation in the fire of the Holy Ghost in the double portion of your spirit in the name of Jesus Now on the count of three, shout fire. Something's getting ready to come down in this place. I feel the weight of God coming down right now. Come on, you're pulling. One. It's coming upon you. It's coming upon you. Upon your sons and daughters. Two. Kivalabakiatasha. Ebrande Kisata Three shot fire 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 In the name of Jesus I prophesy to you that you will see the new Nigeria. I declare unto you in the name of Jesus that the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. You will carry this torch. You will run your race. You will finish your race. The mantle of Elijah is coming upon this generation. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a shout. The Lord spoke to me. He said, Tonight is the night of deciding the fate of the nations. 
Tommy, we thank you for that powerful session. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit. Help those under the anointing. Everyone connected online, let your heart be ready because fire is going to drop in this place tonight. Heavily is here already okay Pastor Yeka, please come please be seated Those hands together for Jesus. Can you put those hands together for Jesus? Can you put those hands together for Jesus? For that wonderful world. Put those hands together for Jesus. And shout hallelujah. 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 Are you getting blessed already? Are you getting blessed already? Please. Be comfortably seated in God's presence. When I say, why am I 2022? I want you to respond. I am a weakness. Why am I 2022? I am not hearing you. Why am I 2022? Tap, tap your neighbor and tell them, I am a weakness. One more time. I am a weakness. Hallelujah. 